Hi everybody and welcome back to Diary of an Organic Grower. Now today's question is, is what does £20,000 buy you in Hungary? And we're going to come on to that in just one second. But the first question to ask, I guess, is why? Why spend £20,000 on buying a property in Hungary? And what do you get for it? The main reason for doing it was because for me to be able to do what I want to do here, the Diaries of an Organic Grower, it's impossible for me to actually do financially in the UK. That's one of the reasons for relocating here along with Anna, who is Hungarian. The primary driver for all of this was, as I've mentioned in a previous video, was for her to be closer to family, her daughter and grandchildren, back in her native country. So putting those two things together is a no-brainer. So we bought this Tanya and it cost us £20,000 sterling four years ago. Now the idea of this video is not only to show you what you can buy for 20 grand, because there are still properties like this in this area and in many parts of Hungary. You're not going to find them in Budapest or the major cities. You're going to be needed to come out, out into the stick, so to speak. So as well as the £20,000 for the house, and in the previous video I told you about the paperwork we went through in order to buy it and the rules and the regulations, we've also spent money here on renovating it because it was pretty run down. So £20,000 for the house and all the land, which as I've mentioned before is four hectares, so it's quite a big space, but that's been divided up. So within that four, he four hectares of area or space, we have about one hectare that has been fenced off for us to have our living space. So that includes the growing area for the fruit and vegetables, and then also the orchard, which is separate to the... When I say fruit and vegetables, I'm talking about things like soft fruit, strawberries, raspberries, that kind of thing. So we've got that area, we've got the orchard, then we've got the floor plan for the house itself. Then we have numerous outbuildings. Um, we also have the wood store and we have the driveway and the gate, all that kind of stuff. So that's roughly one hectare. And then the rest of it is given over to grassland. And what we do with that is if we get enough rain, we can let that grass grow, cut it, bail it for animal feed for the winter and make a profit on it. So within that fenced area, we're looking at around about a hectare-ish. So having spent £20,000 on the house and any relevant taxes, to get the keys, we started work. And this is what we've done. This is the back of the house, like the old roof and also the plaster on the wall. So we removed the old plaster Prepared the wall as necessary and then applied this new lovely green protective coating to keep out the rain. These are the old front gates that we had and also looking towards the outside terrace before we filled it in. And again, look at that roof. That's all been changed. And the garage on the right hand side, that's going to be different soon too. Four years later, we've got this. An old animal pen that we've since knocked down alongside it an old mulberry tree, which has also been removed because it was dead. This is looking down towards the back of the house on the right hand side. And if you look at that soil, very, very sandy, not a lot of life in there, but this is the area that we plan to plant the orchard. You can see just how sandy the soil is around here. There's absolutely no organic matter in this at the time of the photograph and very low in life. With work progressing, a lot of materials were taken out, including the floor and the new conservatory after enclosing the old outside terrace. So, it's out with the old and in with the new. But all put to good use. Work had started on our very old, knackered bathroom area. And at the same time, with the terrace now filled in, we were beginning to see some progress. New bathroom finished. Now we can start on the outside walls. And here's the result. We're looking into the old kitchen area. Now we've got a new kitchen complete with an induction electric cooker and fan, fan oven. Alongside that, new worktops and obviously new tiles. And even the outside areas are a lot more productive than they were, with a new garden shed and somewhere for the dog to run around. 
I certainly couldn't do this in the UK. Absolutely impossible. So having spent 20 on the house, 35 on the, on the renovation works, we have got a very nice house for us with our new lighting, new kitchen, new bathroom, new conservatory and the growing spaces. And to me, 55 grand to be able to have all this and be able to do what I've always wanted to do is pretty cheap for me. So this 55,000 pounds gets us to this point today. But there's still some things for us to do. Um, that figure of renovation work is purely on the house. Um, there's a, probably another two or three, maybe four thousand pounds a maximum on money I've spent on renovating the garden area. If you if you recall in previous videos, this was never an organic space when we got it. It was an agricultural um, space, and it, we are surrounded by acre upon acre or hectare upon hectare, and we're talking thousands of it of agricultural land to grow food commercially using loads of chemicals, using loads of pesticides and herbicides. But in this little four acre, sorry, four hectare space or pocket, amongst it all, completely organic, no chemicals, absolutely whatsoever. And nothing's been like that has been put on this ground for the last six years. So I know we're 100% organic, without a doubt. Now, some people might think, oh, he lives a bit out of the way. Well, not really. I'm about a kilometre maximum from the, from the village centre, which is extremely well served. And I'm going to be putting out a video very soon about the village to show you the amenities and the services that are there. Doctor's surgery, post office, pharmacy, shops, garage, you name it. It's, we've got it all. We've even got a cash machine. So we're not that remote. We can step in, step out as we see fit. There's also a lot of forestry and woodland areas um, that surround us too. So again, that is a, f a future video because this is the time of year now as we're coming into autumn where people are out foraging. There's a lot of mushrooms growing around um, in our area at the moment and a lot of people are out there foraging for them. Now, if I need to commute up to Budapest, it's two hours on the train, same length of time in the car and the motorways are pretty clear. So, you know, for me to be able to commute to various major cities isn't that much of an issue for me. So it's a small price to pay. With regards to creature comforts, we just installed Starlinks because the, the original internet system we had here was very slow. I've gone from 20 uh, megabytes, I think, it, is it megabits per second download speed of 20 with the original firm to Starlink 300. So, and not much difference in price. So, you know, there's lots of things. If you adapt, spending your 55,000 pounds on doing something like this, is more than affordable, especially when you can do other things to keep the creature comforts that you might be used to. Now, if you want to know about um, buying cars and you want to know about the bureaucracy and the paperwork, that's all in previous videos. All I wanted to do today was to show you what your money can potentially buy you in this country if you look hard enough. Having said that, as you know, some of you, I found this on um, Facebook Marketplace through the son-in-law. So they are around and there are houses for sale in the village if you don't want to renovate your own property and want to move straight in. So there's lots around. Just do your research and you'll be absolutely fine. Now we've got some future plans. We've been here four years. We're very familiar with the house. We're very comfortable with it. But there's just a couple of things that I want to do to future-proof it. And having spoken with Anna, we've agreed on, on our next major project. And that's going to be coming out over the next three or four weeks as that project progresses. Now, I'm the kind of person that gets up in the morning and wants to get on and do things. I can't sit around. My brain is always working and there's always something I either need to do or I want to do. Now, for me here, I am now able to develop my ideas about organic growing, which is why I've got Diary of an Organic Grower. Now, it's important for me to be able to do what I'm doing. And I would love the opportunity to teach other people to do the same thing because I know that organic growing is the best way forward because you add it to all those other gardening theories, as I've mentioned time and time again, do whatever gardening theory you want to do, but if you're not going to use chemicals and be an organic grower, that is a great way to be. Now, if I wasn't busy enough with looking after four hectares of land around here, then um, where would I find the time to do the YouTube channel, which is what you're watching this on now? The idea of it all is to try and educate other people. And if you can pick up one little bit out of all of this, then great. Now, let me know if you do. I'd love to, love to hear from you. The other thing I'm doing is Substack, as I've mentioned in the past, and here's a link to that stack. And all that's about is being more nerdy, should we say, about the sciences behind um, being an organic grower. 
it is important and I do come across a lot of research papers that I then further investigate and then I try and translate it in such a way it's easy for you to understand because there's a lot of technical jargon in there. Even I don't get it, so I have to re-research that in order to deliver it to you. That's all on the Substack. So the content on the Substack is nowhere near the same as it is on here. And the difference between YouTube and the stack, no adverts on the stack, no costs, nothing. You can subscribe for absolutely no money whatsoever. Now, what else have I done? I've done that. I've produced this book. It's published and it's available for you to buy on Amazon. Or if you want a free copy of it, subscribe to the stack and you get a copy for this absolutely free of charge. So um, it's not a book that tells you about how to grow a particular type of vegetable. It gives you the principles and the outlines on being an organic grower. So it's worth a read, I reckon. So at the beginning of this, you saw a short video or a few clips put together of the before and afters of the, of the house what we started with and what we've kind of ended up with and including the growing areas. There's a little bit of that in there. And like I said, there's loads of videos on the channel about that if you're interested in taking a look. Got a couple of future projects coming up. As you know, we've got the pavilion that's now been installed on the front of the house. And we are about to renovate or replace the old garage that we had at the front of the house. Remember in that video you saw the gray square building on the right hand side? That's all going. I've mentioned in the past, I wanted to replace it with something We've now come up with a design that includes a summer kitchen, which for this part of the world is an important thing to have. If you're producing all the stuff in your garden, you need to be able to process it, either by freezing it or canning it or pickling it, whatever it might be. And a summer kitchen is an ideal thing to have in this, in this part of the world because then you're freeing it, you're not tying up the space of your main kitchen to produce the stuff that you want to preserve for the winter from your own garden. Now, fingers crossed, we're hoping that work's gonna start in the next couple of weeks. It's gonna take about four weeks to, to do. So again, I'll document all of that so you can see the structure of it and how we're putting it together. And then I'll release that as a video as well. I'll continue doing the stuff on Substack and that's a weekly thing. So like I say, if you wanna have a look at that, there's the link there down below and join us over there. And like I say, get a copy, get a free copy of your book. But for now, take care and I'll catch up with you very soon.